Well, I know this is going to sound a little bit odd, but that I first got the idea for a book on New Zealand made bicycles in 2018 after going to a children's uh, book awards. And children's books are so creative, it really got me um, inspired thinking about different types of books that had yet to be written. And um, by the end of the by the end of the night, I'd thought about three different types of books, and one of them, the one that uh, that really got traction, was a book on New Zealand made bicycles. And I thought at first, oh, it would just be a book on 50 New Zealand made bicycles. That'll be hard enough to, to find, 50 bikes. Um, and that's partly because I, I really didn't realise at that stage how many bicycles had been built in New Zealand and how big the industry had been. But I was soon to discover. I started the bulk of the research at the beginning of the year, beginning of 2021, down in Dunedin at the Toitu Otago Settlers Museum, which was really fitting because they've got the oldest bicycle in New Zealand, one that was built in 1869. Uh, and then from there, I travelled to Mosgiel, up to Omaru, to Timaru, to Christchurch, to a few collectors around Canterbury, and then up to Nelson, across to Wellington, over to Hawke's Bay, and then I travelled up to Auckland and discovered a couple of massive collections in Auckland. Um, well, I guess they fall into three different categories, the types of people who, who own or look after New Zealand made bicycles. The first category were the professional curators of museums around the country. The second category were the private collectors who owned the largest collections in New Zealand and were often the most informed. And then the third category, which was an interesting category again, were just random people who happened to still own a New Zealand made bicycle that they had bought 10, 20, 30 or even 40 years ago and they, they still owned it and they were still riding it. So that they, were, they, were, they had really good interesting stories about the bicycles that they owned. Gosh, um, that's a tricky one, but one of the first bikes that jumps to mind is a full suspension bike made in 1889. And I was just amazed that New Zealand had been making full suspension bikes that early. Um, but I, I was also really delighted to find out what good condition it was and how well the history of that specific bike was known. Because people hadn't realised that this bike, which had been in collections in New Zealand for a century, had actually been made here in Christchurch um, but during the COVID lockdown the owner Bob Knight uh, did some research spent the spare time he had during lockdown doing research and cleaned the bike thoroughly and discovered the little words wallaby stamped into one part near the back wheel and through that he was able to trace the patent drawings um, newspaper articles about it and discover exactly who had built the bike when they'd built it and who they'd sold it to and how it had gone from being owned privately through to being owned by a series of collectors. So that was really satisfying to get that knowledge. Um, another bicycle that was really exciting to find was a New Zealand made woman's bicycle from 1932. And part of the reason for that is that there are so few early women's bikes made uh, that have survived. So we know that lots of women's bikes were manufactured in New Zealand but for some reason collectors haven't valued them really highly. But there was one specific bike made for Nurse Maud in 1932 and she was quite elderly then so the bicycle didn't get used for very long and then it got stored at the back of her district nursing home and it, it just stayed there until a couple of years ago when a storage area was being cleaned out and at the very back here was this 1932 ladies loop bicycle in mint condition, absolutely perfect. So that was really exciting and that was a find that um, Peter McLeod from Christchurch um, managed, to, managed to tell me about. And then I guess if I had to choose a third one, and it's difficult to choose a third one because there are so many um, interesting bikes discovered, it was, um, it was actually just a, 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 a rally chopper. And the challenge there was that I only wanted New Zealand made bicycles in this book obviously. And choppers, rally choppers were made um, in the UK by their millions, but there were also tens of thousands made in New Zealand by Morrison Industries under license to rally. 
and the difference between um, uh, a UK chopper and a New Zealand chopper, they're quite small. On the surface, they're quite small, but it was really important to me to, to find a New Zealand made chopper and eventually I found one that had been restored and looked, looked beautiful, so that was really satisfying. I guess the most significant thing is the sheer extent of the New Zealand bicycle industry. Um, to start with, I just thought I'd aimed to include 50 different bicycles in the book. And um, my brother said to me, oh, 50, that's going to be quite hard to find. Maybe you should just, j just go for 35, you know, don't make the job too hard for yourself. And as you know, in the end, um, I found 60 different bicycles for the, for the book. And I could have easily found more. Because I guess in hindsight, the number of different bicycles made in New Zealand is probably closer to a thousand different bicycles. And most people um, are just staggered to, to think that we built 60 New Zealand bicycles. But in actual fact, there have been over a hundred different bicycle factories over the last 150 years, um, making many, many different bikes. And in 1985 alone, there were about 50 New Zealand different New Zealand made bicycles made just in that single year. Uh, you know, it was, it was quite an amazing feeling to walk into a bicycle cave with a, with a collector who is so passionate about the art and the engineering and the culture of all of the machines that they have in their space and their care. And so it was always exciting to meet a collector and see their different range of bicycles. But if I had to pick one or two situations that were particularly amazing, um, it was up in Auckland. Um, first meeting uh, the owner of Forza, Steve Thompson, who had actually had around about 50 New Zealand made bicycles as well as hundreds of others, meticulously restored, and in, in absolutely perfect condition and he knew about every single one of those bicycles so that that was fantastic um, and there was another collector in Auckland who had around about a hundred bicycles and his bicycles were quite special because they ranged from the from the 18 early 1870s um, through to almost the present day so he had a, a really broad historical range of bicycles and I spent a day with each of those people um, gleaning as much knowledge as possible and rapidly taking photos and it was a it was a real buzz to spend to spend that time with them with those collections. The bikes we built is a celebration of Kiwi ingenuity as told through 60 unique bicycles and it's also a rediscovery of an industry long since forgotten.